выстрел! The war in Ukraine has been heavily shaped by the constant presence of artillery, a tactic that echoes strategies from the First World War playbook. Artillery holds a deeply ingrained and almost mythical status in Russia, earning it the nickname the God of War. This deep connection stretches back to Peter the Great, who famously melted down church bells to cast cannons for his war against Sweden an act that proves the enduring significance of artillery in Russia's military history. Unlike air power, artillery offers the crucial advantage of functioning around the clock, regardless of weather or the vulnerability of air bases. Since the February 2022 invasion, Russian forces have unleashed a relentless barrage of shells aiming to overwhelm Ukrainian defenses and carve paths for their own troops. While the sheer volume of fire can be devastating, the effectiveness of bombardments goes beyond the number of shells launched. Understanding the difference between a system's effective range and its maximum potential is vital, especially in a long-range artillery duel like the one unfolding in Ukraine. So, how far can these Russian god of war truly reach, and what factors ultimately determine their effectiveness in the face of real-world combat? These are precisely the questions we will delve into today. We will explore the maximum and effective ranges of various artillery systems while uncovering the real-world factors that shape these ranges in the heat of war. Stay tuned. From howitzers to rocket launchers, the firepower of Russia's artillery varies significantly depending on the weapon system. This diversity array allows them to adapt their tactics to different battlefield scenarios in the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. While they've amassed a significant number of artillery systems near the border, we will focus on those confirmed to be actively deployed. Let's explore the range spectrum of these key weapons. At the forefront of Russia's mobile artillery sits the self-propelled howitzer, or SPH. These armored vehicles, often based on tank chassis, combine mobility with destructive power of a cannon. The workhorse of the force, the 2S-19 Mista-S, boasts a range of around 40 kilometers, capable of launching devastating bombardments and disrupting enemy formations. Mista-S units were documented firing on Ukrainian positions near Donbas region in the early stages of the war. Newer iterations like the 2S-35 Koalitsiya SV push the boundaries even further, boasting a potential range exceeding 80 kilometers. This advanced system offers increased precision, allowing it to engage targets further from the front lines. Koalitsiya SV units have reportedly been deployed in eastern Ukraine, targeting Ukrainian strongholds in the Donbass region. While the exact number deployed remains classified, these SPHs have undoubtedly played a significant role in shaping the conflict. Their ability to shoot and scoot, fire a barrage and then relocate swiftly makes them a challenging target for counter-battery fire. Next, the towed howitzer. Unlike self-propelled guns, Towed howitzers require a separate vehicle to transport them, making them less mobile but offering greater firepower. Their maximum range can reach impressive distances, exceeding 30 kilometers for some models. However, the effective range, where accuracy is optimal, is typically much lower, around 15 to 20 kilometers. Russia has extensively utilized towed howitzers in Ukraine. These weapons have been documented in various locations throughout the conflict, including the eastern Donbass region, where long-range artillery duels have been a defining feature of the fighting. 
the Soviet-era D-30, with its 15-kilometer range, has been seen deployed closer to the front lines, while the more modern 2A-65 Mista B, boasting a 26-kilometer range, allows Russian forces to potentially engage targets from further behind the battle lines. Another artillery system found in Ukraine is Multiple Launch Rocket Systems, or MLRS. Russia relies heavily on MLRS for wide area attacks, since these mobile launchers, capable of firing a rapid succession of rockets, can saturate large areas with explosives in a short time. The BM-21 Grad, a linchpin of the Russian MLRS force, boasts a range of 20 to 40 kilometers depending on the rocket type. However, its effectiveness comes at the cost of accuracy, which is inferior to more modern systems. For striking targets at extended distances, Russia also deploys the Smirch MLRS. Unlike the Grad, the Smirch unleashes a heavier payload capable of traveling a staggering 90 kilometers. This extended reach allows Russian forces to engage Ukrainian positions from a far safer distance, significantly amplifying the threat they pose. Bridging the gap between the Grad and the Smirch lies the BM-27 Uragan, another Soviet-era MLRS system fielded by Russia. The Uragan fires 220mm rockets and boasts a range of 35 to 40 kilometers, offering a middle ground between the shorter range Grad and the longer range Smirch. Firing ranges might showcase the maximum potential of artillery systems, but real-world conditions act as a significant check on their actual reach. Ammunition plays a crucial role in this regard, similar to how a powerful sports car with a lightweight frame easily outpaces a heavily loaded truck. Rockets propelled by stronger charges and carrying lighter warheads naturally travel farther than their heavier, less potently propelled counterparts. The terrain further complicates matters. Firing uphill launches the shell on a steeper trajectory, potentially extending its range, while firing downhill shortens the flight path. The angle of the gun barrel itself also plays a part. Firing at a higher elevation allows the shell to travel a longer distance before hitting the ground. These factors, combined with the inherent limitations of the artillery system itself, paint a more nuanced picture of its true capabilities on the battlefield, one that goes beyond the idealized conditions of a firing range. So the God of War might not be as invincible as its nickname suggests. While the raw numbers showcase impressive potential, real-world conditions and complex calculations determine their true reach. What are your thoughts? Is there any other factor we need to add? Let's keep the conversation going in the comments and thanks for watching.